Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What is good? What hey! is on? We are here. We are back. New season. Cuatro. 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 Cuatro, man. Number four. Number four. Yeah, man. Yeah, here man. we go. Season four. What's going on, good people? 92.6 the spot. Welcome to Not Right, Not Wrong. This is your boy Jess Ja. Thank you for supporting us. Continue to subscribe. Tell a friend, tell a friend, to tell another friend. Facts. Yeah. Look here. Y'all know the drill. Whoever speaks is the one who's narrating the show and is the one who has the topic subject matter. Blah, blah, blah. So tonight it be me hosting, facilitating a little bit because <laughs> I set up the topic tonight. But before I, we do that, before I do that, before we do that, I must welcome back my partners. Hey! Comrades. Hey! Back. Another hey. Floor. You know, we got to take a little break from each other because it's human nature that we do. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, we got to take a little breather. You know what I mean? But we's back. We got to get refreshed. But now we's back. D1, Empress, good to see you. Welcome back. Season D4. four. Yeah, baby. D1, what's good with you? Hola, como estas, mi amigos? Bienvenido. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Bien, 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 bien. <laughs> It's good to be back. It's good to be seen. I'm excited. I'm rejuvenated. I'm ready to rock. Yeah, I love it. Love it, man. Love it. Love it. Love it. El Capitan. El Hey. Mark. What up? What up? What up, man? Yes, Listen. yes. What it do? What it do, kid? Camp Vibes. Season four. Like you said, man, you know, allow me to start off by saying it has truly been a pleasure going through the other three seasons with you guys. You know, it is not as easy as people think it is just coming up with these topics. Because initially, when we first started, I said, oh, man, it's never going to be a shortage of topics with all the stuff going on in this world. But then you realize it's your turn. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I got to think of something. <laughs> yeah. You understand? And, and at the same time, we're not thinking about being canceled. At the same time, we just want to be mindful of certain things that go on. Maybe this, maybe that. So, you know, just coming up with these topics for the last three seasons and now on to the fourth one as we continue on. It's just been a pleasure being around you guys laughing and joking the seriousness agreements, disagreeing, and everything that come with, man. So let's keep it rocking for season four, man. It's truly a pleasure. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's rock. Let's rock it out. Well, of course, and we always got to shout out our 92.6, the Spot family. For sure. Yeah, yeah. We are on there Fridays, 6 p.m. to 7. That for is sure. our spot. 92.6, the Spot. WKBP. Shout out to Ben, our fearless leader. Shout out to all the other podcasts. Yep, and yep. Shout out to the rest of the tribe. Hope all is doing well. We all are doing well. But we are here, 92.6, the spot, Fridays, 6 p.m. to 7. And catch us on our YouTube channel and subscribe, damn it. We need more yes. people. We need uh, more uh, folks. Hit yes. the button. Yes, hit, hit the button. Hit Just that hit like. the button. You already like us. You already like hey, the yeah, show. Yeah. You already like what we're talking about. You know you like what we're talking about. Come on, <laughs> man. Hit the button. Hit the button. That's all hit we have. It don't cost much. It don't cost much. At yeah. all. Hit the button. Share. Tell your friends. Indeed. Do so the pay, thing. Pay for your internet. Yeah, yeah. Do that, too. Do that pay first. For your, pay for your internet. Oh, no. we'll do that first. V very important. That's very important. You yeah, Star do Starbucks does close, so you, you do. You better, you better pay for your internet. No free Wi-Fi, not all the time. <laughs> Got to go home. I you mean, pay for home. your internet or figure out what your neighbor's password is. One of the other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, one of, yeah, 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 exactly. One right. of the other. One of the there, other. There are options. There are always options. Get that hot spot. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> Get that hot spot. Gosh. Comrades. Well, the first topic of season four I would like to uh, talk about is the power of this. Mm. The human mind. Mm. The mind. Okay. okay. Yes, yes. So the reason why I wanted to talk about the power of the human mind is actually inspired by uh, Brother Mark's episode of what the hell is this world coming to that, that we did uh, last season. And it made me think about that a little bit. And, then I, and I just think about how every, every action comes from a thought. And uh, what, what is it that comes into those thoughts to make you uh, take action to do what you do? Or what is it that makes you come to a decision to mm. execute the action that you execute? Or what is the mindset you have to make you uh, just move, just move the way you move. The what, 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 what mindset one person's had to move the way they move. Um, how does that come about? You know, we often hear that uh, the cliche, um, "What your mind can believe, it can achieve." Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. um, if you put your mind to something, it can manifest. We all have heard all these manifestation talks. Our mind is a terrible thing to waste. Mind is a terrible thing to waste, and things of that nature. But what I what I what I find interesting is that um, the human mind is powerful, and some people, there's a lot of people out here that uh, really exercise that power in the mind and accomplish many great things, phenomenal things, phenomenal things that's beyond um, uh, the imagination or beyond the supposed possibility of human capabilities and people, people accomplish that. So uh, for instance, um, just to give an example, let's take uh, acrobats. I'm just gonna use acrobats as an example where they can uh, perform live in a circus and do flips with uh, no safety net or they're balancing on a, uh, balancing on a wire with the, with the sticks and uh, you know, doing those high flying uh, performances. What is what is going on in their mind where they're mm -hmm. able to establish that kind of focus and do those phenomenal feats beyond what uh, let's quote unquote the average human think is possible? What what is going on in the mind? What what keeps the focus? Is it the actual mind or does something come before the mind? And com and conversely. What goes on in a person's mind where Mark would question, what the hell is this world coming to? What What is going on up there? What is going on up there? Um, you guys have any, uh, let's start with you, D1. Let's, what's, what's your assessment of the human mind? I mean, yeah, let's, let's just start do with D1. Best. Just do your best. I know we're, we're, we're not scientists, uh, so we can't break down, break it down in biological terms, but you're still a highly intelligent woman regardless. And your occupation, I'm not going to disclose, deals with the mind. Yeah. Ah, ah, so. Yeah. I fell asleep up. in those classes, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. Right. I don't have much for you along the, along the lines of like neurobiology and synapses yeah. and yeah. yeah. I don't, I'm not going to talk that language. Yeah, that, mean, yeah. you, that mean you do. That mean you do. <laughs> right. You just, you just put those big words out there already. So I mean, I, the answer is C. The answer is always. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But but give but give us give us your 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 assessment there. Uh the human mind. What is what is what is what is so intriguing about it that makes a uh, uh, human make a decision that he or she makes or move the way he, he or she moves? I don't know. I think I think the human mind is powerful. And I think that we probably, I mean, there's studies that show we barely tap into any of the capacity that we have. Mm -hmm. um, 
And I, I, I don't know, John. Dang it, I don't know. I think that if we can harness the power of um, belief, experience, and focus, then there's not much that we can't, that our mind can't begin to conceive and unpack. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that part of what undoes us is mm -hmm. what our experiences are. Because mm -hmm. some of us are living, I mean, many of us are living in little boxes, right? You stay with your family or in your neighborhood or even in your city. Um, and you start to believe that the extent of what you can accomplish is what you can see. Um, and so maybe that limits us a little bit. And even within the age of social media in this level of connectedness, I think that there's a way that we see things and we go, that's not, we can't accomplish that. That other person could do that, mm. but we, we can't accomplish that. I have, a, um, I use the Peloton app sometimes. I don't have the bike or tra I don't have any of the equipment, but like <laughs> I'll do, <laughs> I'll do whatever their workouts I can do without their equipment. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just knew that was going to follow. <laughs> But it's but I pay for it, so <laughs> let me make that clear. <laughs> you ain't using your neighbor's password, right? I'm not using my you neighbor's use password. Neighbor's okay. Dig it. Dig it. Okay. 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 And um, we need sponsorship, Peloton. So come through. <laughs> Holla at us. Holla at us. No big facts. Listen, come through Peloton. Yeah. But there is this one trainer on the Peloton app, and we're not getting any advertisement money for this. Rebecca Kennedy mm -hmm. is on this advertisement app. And there's this one workout that she has. It's a it's a walk. It's a like a I don't know, it's a walk program. Mm -hmm. And she is doing it to Beyonce's music. Mm -hmm. And at one point, as she's like, she's talking on top of Beyonce's music and she's saying, she says at one point, Beyonce, you and Beyonce have the same number of hours in a day. Mm -hmm. And I think, okay, so Beyonce has a whole team. Let's X all of that out for a minute. Let's X Dang out the reality of what Dang Beyonce it. actually has. Mm -hmm. But just that statement, we all have the same amount of hours in a day. Yes. Some people do a lot of stuff with those hours. <laughs> yeah, um, and it, what is that? Is that that their mind functions better than other people's mind? Is it a belief system? Is it focus? Is it, does doubt get in the way? Um, another thing that I like, um, another line that I like a lot that I think I may have mentioned two, three, four times already, it feels like, is a line from India Ari in one of her songs she says, the words that come from your mouth, you're the first to hear. Mm. And that to me is also powerful. And I think it speaks towards this connection between your mind and your actions and what you're able to accomplish. To oh. your point, John, these acrobats, you couldn't get me to walk the tightrope because yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm already telling myself I'm a doc. <laughs> so if you telling yourself <laughs> you're going to die, <laughs> You kind of defeating all of the purpose, but Facts. they must not be telling themselves that they can't possibly. You can't put your head in a lion's mouth and be telling yourself that you're gonna die at the same time. <laughs> 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 so I don't know. I think the mind is powerful. I don't know exactly how to tap into that power. I think maybe some of it is about thoughts. I think maybe some of it is about exposure and experiences. Maybe some of it is about hallucinogenics. Maybe some of it, maybe we need some mushrooms in our lives so that we can tap into this space. Or some Hennessy. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we need some assistance to get there. That's what I got for you right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I got. Well, what say you, Doc? So, um, I don't know. This this could go a lot of places in regards to the mind, man. This could be a very short podcast. Or this could go on, but I know we have some time restraints because we do have to get on with the rest of our lives. Mm. 
But uh, something, you know, that, that I'll bring up, because you mentioned it initially once you said it was going to be your topic, like what make us think about our thoughts, What because everything starts with a thought. Everything starts with a decision. And then we just proceed forth from there. So um, two things that we'll bring up. One of the things that may determine the thought that you're going to think, um, I think a comedian said this, I can't remember who, but he said that, you always know that it's going to end bad when a friend of yours comes to you and say, all you got to do is. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. And every single one of us, all three of us here, probably got four or five friends that to say, listen, all you got to do is, you already know where that's going. Yeah. So yeah. that's going to trigger some thought. Now, it may be based on the person, how long you've known them, their character, who they associate with, things they may have done in the past. That's going to trigger a decision on whether or not, okay, cool, I'm going to go along with it or I'm not. But nine times out of ten, when it starts, listen, all you got to do, that's going to end bad. Yeah. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. And um, another thing. So what people say in, in regards to fear, they always say overcome your fear. And this isn't keeping with the mind, just to think about it. So when I was a little kid, I was definitely afraid of elevators. Mm -hmm. I mean, definitely afraid of elevators. My babysitter, she lived on the 16th floor, which mean I had to get in the elevator. So every time we walk home from school, I'm coming home from 132, I get to the building, everybody in the lobby, all the school kids, and I wouldn't get on the elevator. And everybody get on the elevator, five, six, seven elevators go by, I wouldn't get on. So the other kids is in the ba in the babysitter's apartment, so now she's worried. Where's Mark? But she can't leave to come downstairs to get me because the kids are there. Mm -hmm. so one of the other young girls that was in there named Tammy Benjamin, I'll never forget, she said, Mark downstairs. So... Now I'm there. I'm just looking at the elevator. Then I start crying. Because mm -hmm. I can't get on this thing. I mean, I was definitely afraid. Mm -hmm. So once the elevators go by, everybody go upstairs, all the school kids. I know I got to go upstairs at some point. I wait till no one is on the elevator. And I get on the elevator. And I press the button. And the whole time it's going upstairs, I just close my eyes. I don't open my eyes to a stop on 16. Then I get off and the, the babysitter, she's always upset what I'm doing. So this pattern kept repeating itself of me being scared. So I go to the building. So if one person in the elevator, maybe, sorry, maybe three or four people, I would get on. And then as the elevator became more crowded, as you repeated, I start to get more comfortable with getting on the elevator. So it took about, I'd say maybe four or five, six months or something like that, but it took some time. But eventually, just me repeating that pattern, I got over it. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even recognize I was getting over it because by that time, I was just getting on the elevator so much. And even when, you know, my brother or sister came to pick me up from the babysitter, they knew I was afraid of elevators. So they would get on and just start jumping up and down on it. So the elevator is shaking and all that. Right? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know siblings are cruel. So I get home, tell my mom and dad, and then they slap the shit out of them. <laughs> you know, what they were supposed to do. Uh, but this is going, and so I had to get on the elevator. There's no way around it. I'm not walking up 16 flights. Yeah. So just one day at a time, and just just me and my little self, my little mind coaching myself. Mark, you got to get on the elevator. So it went from me closing my eyes to me opening my eyes. And then every day going forward, I just start feeling more comfortable to where I was finally over it. And I was just getting on the elevator. So the whole time I'm coaching myself, but it was a definitely fear. I'm crying just looking at the elevators and how they work. I'm like, damn, this thing is going to fall. It's going to fall. Same thing to me. It was like, damn, if it falls, I'm going to die. I don't want to die in the elevator. But I just got over it a little bit at a time, just me coaching myself like, Mark, you could do it. So it's amazing what can take 
place, when you're faced with something that you think is fearful for whatever reason, and then turns out it's not. And then you just overcome it and look back like, damn, I didn't even have to feel like that. But at the time, you don't know why you feel like that. You understand? But just in regards to what you're saying, something to think about. You know that it was a gentleman that walked across the tightrope between the Twin Towers, right? Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Felipe Petit. Now, whatever was going through his mind, I have no idea. Mm-hmm. He didn't do it once. He did it twice. He walked across one tower and then came back. Mm-hmm. Just watching the movie had me fearful for this guy. I mean, he got arrested. He didn't do any jail time, but it was just a spectacle. And I'm thinking, what did he think of that? What morning when he woke up and said, I'm going to walk across the Twin Towers? Right. What was going through his mind? What was it for? It wasn't for money or anything. Because all the people was just looking up. This is just live entertainment. No one's paying for this. But what was he thinking about? What would make you want to do that? But he slip up say, he's gone. He's gone. People say there's a thin line between genius and insanity. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. I, I don't know how thin that line is. But he did it. And he was successful at it. He came back down. Like I said, he got arrested. Um, you know, he had to pay a fine or something like that. So watching the movie and everything he did, we marveled at it because he survived. But then at the same time, if he would have felt he would have died, what we would have said then? This stupid ass. Why the f- you, you understand? Mm-hmm. Why would you even do that? Mm-hmm. But again, like he may be a genius or he may be insane to think that. But, you know. I don't even know. It's like a hundred books and stuff like that. You could go on Barnes and Nobles to get in regards to the mind. I think just as you go forth in your life and based on your experiences and your experiences with other people and other people you can learn from, that'll just kind of mold you along different decisions that you'll make. And either it'll just in- increase or expand your mind into things you believe you can do. Or it'll decrease it. Like what D once said with some people that just believe they're in this box. I think it's all up to you. You can either enhance it or you can limit the power of it. I think it's one of the two. Agreed, agreed. Um, It's interesting. Uh, That was was a great story you shared, man. And it's interesting that um, our mind, um, the typical human mind, can uh, tell ourselves a negative thought to induce fear not do something very easily as opposed to telling ourselves uh positive thoughts to accomplish something it's very it's very easy to um default to the negative and then the the fear that's induced create the most catastrophic story in your head or narrative in your head mm. that the, that possibility could happen according to your narrative so therefore you won't venture into that feat, such as going into an elevator. But I, but at the same time, it's also remarkable that you as a child was able to coach yourself, coach your mind to overcome that fear. But the fact that the initial fear was um, produced is interesting. So I'm curious to um, your guys' take on that. Why is it so easier for I, I, I have I have my own take, but I would like to hear I like to hear you got your guys' takes first. But it's why why in your opinion is it easier to create a a narrative so catastrophic that it induces fear for you to to partake or venture into something as opposed to having a strong powerful belief that you can do it and have no fear. Well, we'll we'll go to you, uh, brother Mark. Why, um, is, why is the negative easy to? Um, penetrate your mind in the positive. I think it's based on the fact that we actually see that sometimes these things don't work out as planned. Mm -hmm. You understand? You know, just like airplanes. A lot of people have a fear of airplanes. Mm -hmm. A lot of people. But what does the stats say? That's the safest way to travel. Mm -hmm. Anybody you talk to, any aviation expert, they're going to say this is the safest way to travel. Mm -hmm. But that's the last thing you think about when you feel that turbulence. 
Right. You understand? Or even some severe turbulence. That's the last thing you think about. Now, a lot of people, they say, you know, I've been through all kinds of fights, severe turbulence. They may laugh it off. Some people don't. You you know, I, I mean, it, it, what I think, what we think about is that, wow, this may happen to us. Whatever it is that we're fearful of, this may happen to us. But then, on the flip side of that, we have to look at the fact, wow, we're still here, we've done everything. They say the worst way to travel is by driving. I mean, car accidents happen per day, all kinds of thousands of car accidents happen every single day. But yet, we still drive. That's something to be extremely fearful of. But we do it with no abandon, just get in the car, start it up, drive, turn the music on, everything, even checking the mirror. Sometimes we even look at the cell phone. Now, everything we're not supposed to do in the car, we're just throwing all caution to the wind and, they, and we're doing it. This is same thing, another mindset. So in one example, you probably think, which is grand, like you get in a plane and a crash and you die. Mm. Or the worst way to travel, you get in your car and you're driving. I, I think it all depends on what it is or how great the feat may be. You understand? Like if you tell yourself, well, I want to compete in the um, Ironman competition, but you've never trained or anything like that. Now, it may be some people talk to me, but like, listen, I don't think that that's a good idea. But you're going to tell yourself, listen, I want to compete this thing. I'm of age. I feel like this is something I want to do for my age. I want to be proud of myself. That may or may not work out for you. Keep in mind, you got to ride a bike. You, it's a marathon, and you got to swim. But one, you have to know how to swim. Yeah. So I'm not going to compete in that because I don't know how to swim. But I could do the biking and the marathon part. But I would have to tell myself first, like, listen, I could do that. I could finish it. I can compete it. I can complete it. And I'll do it. I think you can fight against that fear depending upon what it is, whatever it is that you put in your head or whatever it is you presented with to think that may not be me. But you're not the first person with that thought. And there may have been a lot of people before you with that same thought and it didn't end well. I think that's where that comes from. Mm -hmm. You have to learn from the mistakes of others. If we don't, you, you know, you'll repeat that same mistake. I think that's where the fear comes from because some people may not have been successful in that endeavor and you think you might be someone else that might not be. Mm. Dig it. Dig it. Empress, your take. Why why the negative narrative easily to default to the positive? <laughs> no, no, no say Papi. I don't know. I don't know. I think um I'm I'm leaning towards what C1 is is yapping about um, because I think that there's um, a survival mechanism that kicks in that is a fear-based survival mechanism that says, don't do this, avoid this. Um, but I also wonder if some of it is genetic um, and passed down. Um, and then like, yo, <laughs> I still am very uncomfortable sleeping with my feet uncovered because I think <laughs> the boogeyman <laughs> oh <God. laughs> okay. I just Grab my my exposed feet. Yeah. I have no experience with a boogeyman. I don't know anybody. <laughs> right. 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 But if you try to make me sleep with my feet uncovered, I'm like, <laughs> like no. Mm. That's that's irreconcilable. That's it. Yes. That's irreconcilable. Andy, and don't sleep just because. Just because you live 50 plus years without a boogie man, don't mean he ain't gonna come. He, just, he, goes, he just might come one day. Ja, ja, what are you doing right now? What are you doing? <laughs> so, so he can't grab your foot even if it's under the cover? Don't 
don't come at me with logic. Don't do that. <laughs> no, I'm just, no. you know. No. Like, I literally could sleep with most of my body uncovered, but my feet, he will get them. He will get them and he will pull me out of the bed. Wow. Okay. So, okay. so where does that come from? Where does, I don't know. I don't know where. So that's not a survival based fear. It just is. Yeah, it's feet. He going to come one day. He going to stop saying that, John. I'm trying, <laughs> I'm trying to be a better person. So. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think this, there probably is a survival mechanism that kicks in. I don't think everybody lives their life that way. I think that there are some people who are, um, who tell themselves different things and have different narratives and are much more willing to um, push the envelope. Um, this dude who walked between the Twin Towers, I promise you he slept with his feet uncovered. He wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, he had did. a different storyline. He, he probably I... did. He probably <laughs> did. I got to research that. Listen, I know I, you don't even have to. I know he did it. I know. <laughs> I can tell you from the surface. I can look at people and tell you who sleeps with their feet uncovered and who does not based <laughs> on how they live their life. Um, but I think that there is, you know, a fear-based narrative maybe that is, and, you know, fear and mind control kind of go together, mm. right? How do you control a, pe a group of people? You got to instill some fear in them. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I answered the question or not, but <laughs> I just exposed my vulnerability about my feet. So there's that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, all, it's, all, it's all part of the conversation. It, it, it's, all, it's, all, um, it's all valid points. It, um, it's a, it's a, um, it's a, um, I'd say it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a interesting phenomena. It really is a phenomena. Yeah. What are your thoughts about it? That really can't really be explained. That's why we. That's why I brought it up on a show. Not right, not wrong, because it's mm -hmm. not the right or wrong answer. You dig, bang. So, <laughs> but it's uh, but it's it's it, it's a phenomenon. It really is a phenomenon because you. Because we witness, or even in our own personal life, we witness people accomplish astronomical feats, and we see people, again, to Mark's point, we question what the hell is going on in this world. You know what I mean? So the two polar opposites, the two, the two extreme opposites, this is still a phenomenon about the mind that's directing a human being to execute those acts. You know, so, but it, here's my here's my offering to that question. Um, so, uh, Angie, our spiritual teacher, uh, she broke down to us that um, from where we're born up, uh, from where we're born up to the age of seven, those are the most um, critical years of our life because those are the those are the, those first seven years are what determines our likes and dislikes, our fears, our so and our survival mechanisms. The during being what we're receiving verbally, what we're exposed to visually, and what we're taught. And and if any and if we experience anything traumatic between um childbirth and up to seven, um that that seals that seals uh what she, she what she likes to call our floppy disk. Our floppy disk is sealed, and so from seven on, we're operating on that floppy disk. So, for instance, um, if I'm to, to use a quick to to use an example, so if I'm if I'm a baby if I'm a baby, and I'm playing I'm playing with the um, electrical plug, and I get electrocuted, that's gonna that's gonna send that's going to send a fear to my consciousness. So as as I as I go on about life, I'll probably I'll probably be fearful of electrical appliances and equipment because of my experience of putting my innocently not knowing what's going on, putting my hand in a socket that was live and I got shocked. 
not electrocuted, shocked. Shocked is a better word. I got shocked as a baby and I got in a traumatized man crying. Ah! Right? So <laughs> yeah, that's, how, that's how baby jaw cries. <laughs> <laughs> that's a quick cry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, being, I'm being shocked. Yeah. <laughs> You know, you know, this is, uh, your hair stand up <laughs> all that. <laughs> so I'm here for baby Jai his cry. <laughs> <laughs> so so as so as a result, any anything dealing with anything electrical, I might have some apprehension about it. Like perhaps going going in an elevator. Elevator is electrically operated. I may have that fear too. Oh, what's gonna what's gonna happen? A fuse a fuse might break. The elevator the elevator may drop. You know, or or what if I um, what if I'm wanting to fix something? What if I'm I'm running my floppy disk. I'm a grown man now, married. Wife wants me to fix an electrical appliance. <laughs> might be apprehensive. Nah, I ain't fixing that. I ain't trying to. Get you. <laughs> yep, you know, so that kind of so that kind of thing. So I'm still operating on a. On on what it, what I was exposed to from my zero to seven because those are the very critical years where your mind is a sponge and is collecting all the data mm. that you that you've been uh, programmed and whether it be verbally, visually, or otherwise. So you're operating through that. So I think that's where it, it translates as you start your mind develops and you start to understand things. It translates into fair based narratives. That you could easily default to, because if you're growing up and you don't see anything um, um, on a positive end, where something is accomplished or that's not instilled in you by your parent, then it, I think it will be difficult for you to transform your mind into thinking that way to that to that opposite of belief and positivity and um, accomplishing anything. It will, it will be difficult to go there where it'd be more easeable, easy to go to the narrative of being uh, shocked or trapped in the elevator. So I th I th that's, that's my take on it. So that was, that was, that was introduced to us by my spiritual teacher. She, she experienced that. To us. She said, all of us, all of us, if we're unconsciously are operating on that zero to seven floppy disk from seven on up, and it could be different forms of uh, situations and circumstances, but we're still operating on that floppy disk. So if um, if something, if uh, so, so even if, um, if we see, uh, if we see violence or violence is inflicted upon us as a, as a child, traumatic, where we may either be confrontational, be either be confrontational or be mm -hmm. so non-confrontational, fearful. So it, it can operate in either extreme based on how we take that information. Because it, it, in a, I think in our because in our mind the data is computing in our in our electrons in our brain is computing. So as we as our mind develops, we get to translate what that data is for us. So we experience something traumatic we're going to be aggressive so is it not to happen to us anymore or we're going to be a recluse fearful no i don't want that to happen to me anymore so it's so it's so it's so it's her or no either or mm -hmm. yeah. and which one did you become ja uh, I <laughs> well i think ja his, All right, I was, I was feet, her. He kept his feet under the cover. I <laughs> <laughs> don't keep his feet under the cover. John's like, he's putting peanut butter on his big toe. Like, oh, oh, no. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's definitely move on. Not, he's like, not the big toe. Not the big toe. That's a, he just said he's uh, he's a fighter. He's like, come on, boogeyman, what's good? <laughs> so you invite the boogeyman with the uh yeah. <laughs> so no, I don't even know if boogeyman I, like peanut butter. Do they like peanut butter, John? I don't, I don't, I don't even know. 
<laughs> but you keep doing it anyway. You just keep <laughs> listen, D1, it's only one way to find out. I'm not doing that. I'm not playing, I'm not playing those games. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I, I refuse to tempt fate. Okay. Oh, Yo, you're not gonna leave it out and see, huh? You know, nah. I dig nah. it. Mm -mm. I dig it. I dig it. I dig it. Y'all won't see me back next week. Y'all be like, what happened to you? <laughs> I played too much. I played too much. I played too much. Oh man. I thought everything was funny. Oh man. <laughs> well, so and so in um in closing, how do you how how do you guys propose that we can um make that transfer to um exceed our own expectations and surprise ourselves by by transferring our thought, transferring our narrative to that side of um thinking greatness on ourselves and thinking that we can go above and beyond beyond our own imagination. What what what's your guys take on how we can make that transfer with our mind, D1? I think I think young C1 gave us a very good example mm -hmm. of um, that that slow exposure. I agree. Um, that's that slow exposure. He, there was probably I think there was probably two fears in that moment. It was the fear of the elevator, and it was fear what, what was going to happen if he didn't get up to the babysitters. <laughs> <laughs> and one fear was bigger. He said, "I got to get up there. I got to go up there. <laughs> I got to get, get up. What yeah. am I going to do?" Um, and in doing that, in his youthful wisdom, he slowly exposed himself and he found ways to do it with increasing, like, um, ha being as safe as possible and then challenging that, that idea of safety. At first, I'm going to let everybody go upstairs and I'm going to get in the elevator by myself. I'm going to press the button. I'm going to close my eyes. Um, I imagine that maybe that went from, I think you even said it, C1, from closing your eyes to opening your eyes, from yes. opening your eyes to go in with a couple of people, not three or four, maybe one or two. Then, you know, you know, your, your sibs had to re-traumatize you at some point <laughs> by jumping up and down the jumping elevator. Jumping up and down. Um, I don't, I don't believe Mel did that. Earn, yes. She Mel, did. Never. Both of them. <laughs> Trust in me. <laughs> Rush. No cap. No cap. No lie. No, but even in good. that, there might have been some exposure, some harsh exposure therapy, right? Some harsh, like, see, we jumping up and down and we still good. Um, so you know, maybe not the best way to do it. But I think <laughs> I think there's some wisdom in that. Um, I think there's some, I think another approach is um kind of what you're talking about, Ja, is the awareness. Awareness of where it started. How did it begin? How did it go from this, this shock when I was a baby, uh, crying Ja, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to now I won't turn on my TV. Like, how did I get here? Right. So I think understanding that and understanding the root of it as much as we can is, is amazing. Um, and I also think that awareness, just seeing seeing the bigger picture, seeing outside of your environment, seeing outside of your family, seeing outside of your neighborhood, um, helps you see all of what is possible. It might not be something that you want to do or experiment with, but to to see the power of the human body through the the human mind through the actions of the human body is like astounding and maybe maybe that's those are you know some of the pathways to get there mm, nice 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 c1 i like that yeah. i like that well well stated um d1 well stated thank um, you did you see what i did i just stole from you and josh nah, so y'all may not have nothing to say it's, I mean, it's all good it's yeah, all good right, please let me go on record and state that D1 looks very nice in that black. I said that before we started taping, but allow me to go on record and say that she looks very nice in that. 
Thank so, you very much, Mark. Thank you. I appreciate you. So I think a lot of that, and maybe this is one of the things that can come up, or maybe it's not, it may not necessarily be in keeping with the mind, but I, I think a lot of the things we could do, John, in keeping with your question is, um, I think it's faith-based. Mm -hmm. You have to have some sort of belief to believe that you can. I mean, it ain't everything that we do that wakes us up, that tells us to walk, is based on faith. We got to have faith that this will be. Has to be some sort of foundation to build up from. I think a lot of that is faith-based. And the more that you believe in yourself and you tell your mind that this faith will allow you to do this, all those fears and all those walls will continue to come down if you just build upon your faith. And positive reinforcement has a lot to do with that also. It depends on the company you're around. It depends on your friends. It depends on your family. You understand? Some people have dysfunctional families. It's, it's what it is. Some people don't. Some people have families that really support them, tell them things that will definitely get them on to the next point, on to the next stage of their lives. And just tell them things every day that are positive, positively reinforce what it is they want to do. And not only saying that, they live by that example. You know, so we all have kids here. We have to live by example. You know, I know we've heard this all before. Don't do as I do, do as I say, that type of thing. Yep, yep. You know, I, I, I think that's ancient. It's a different time now. You know, as much as it is, that we always think our parent, our kids may not do, you know, what we say. Believe me, they are always listening. Always. Always. And then once a time, but I thought you said. Yeah, yeah, they'll bring it up. Yeah. Bring it up. Yeah, they are yeah. always listening. Mm -hmm. Every single time. Yep. So I think that positive reinforcement has a lot to do with that. With how you feel about yourself and these fears yeah. and how you could change your mind to just start, Mark, you could do that. Mark, you can do that too. Mark, you can do that too. Now, you know, some things within reason, you understand? I can't just go to the gym right up the block for me and bench press 400 pounds. Right. I may not be able to do that today. Mm -hmm. But, you know, based on whatever conditioning and strength training I need to do, at some point, I'm sure I'll be able to do that. So I think the positive reinforcement that you get from other people and people around me and what you tell yourself. And then above all else, you know, I, I think a lot of it is faith based. You got to have some sort of belief, you know, you got to believe, you know, well, I, I'll say God because that's what I believe in. You know, other people have different terms and terminology that they use, but I think it's based on your foundation to just really build that up. Dig it, dig it. I like that answer as well. So um, I concur with both of y'all. So I, my my suggestion would be um, affirmations, um, affirmations, meditation, um, and just constantly affirm yourself on a consistent basis. You have to do that because I because like I said, I think the 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 typical human will default to a negative narrative because in 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 attempting to elevate yourself consciously, you're battling you're battling your own individual traumas and insecurities, and that always speaks first. It's when whenever something happens that you deem negative or bad. That always speaks first. Ah, see, I told you. Up to see the the consciousness. See, I told you you ain't shit. You whack. Or see, I told you. I see. Uh, that girl don't like you. See, I told you your ass was ugly. Or, or whatever the case may be. So, it's so now it's a it's a matter of having the uh, the mindset to reprogram your yourself. Affirm daily affirmations, daily affirmations, the power of words. If words are powerful because words are vibrational. Very, so, very. So any with 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 anything, with anything that you want to accomplish, or just with um self-building, build building building up yourself. Um 
uh, seeking seeking outside for me seeking outside yourself for um, approval or affirmation from other people it's nice but it doesn't count unless you affirm yourself um because a million people a million people could tell you one thing but if you don't feel it yourself it's not effective you have to you have to know it for yourself and feel it for yourself indeed so that's that's my take that is my take. And yeah. and at the same time, just, just to add to your point, you know, we may have different people in our circle or in our family. You know, these are the type of things we may want to tell other people too. Everybody's not going to feel the same way every single day. Mm -hmm. And these are the same type of things we tell them just to uplift them. You understand? Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we may want them to tell us these type of things because... Every day is not going to be as great as the last day. Sure. So all those affirmations and everything you're saying, all that plays a difference. Like you say, words are powerful. Mm -hmm. That's why, what, what they always say, always think before you speak. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, that's that's a quote for a reason. Mm -hmm. yeah. hey, and, you, and, you, and you know, or well, for me anyway, at least I think this way, when you, when you affirm when you affirm someone else, it lifts you. It really does. It lifts you because I I know I know when I when I when I I um I love speaking uh life into people because I know speaking life into people benefits me because it it lifts me up. So it's 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 mutually beneficial. It really it really is. I know I know for me because I I feel uplifted in my spirit when I mm -hmm. uh, say something. Um, positive or affirmative to someone that I care about, um, it, it lifts me as well. Because I know we're we're in this journey of life together, so we're gonna need each other in that sense. So, yeah, it's a vibration for sure. One of the good. the childhood rhymes that I hate that I always hated mm. was "Sticks and stones may break my oh, bones, but God. words will never hurt me." I hated that. I was like. <laughs> Yeah, did you really, really did you hate that when you were young? Because you know, when you're young, you know, you're not thinking at it from the perspective you think about now because you're a lot older and wiser. But when you were young, did you hate it then? I did. Oh wow, okay. I did because I was on the receiving end of it. It, it was like to me, because yeah. sticks and stones are you know, break yeah. your bones with words that never hurt you. But I was super sensitive and I was hurt. Somebody said something to me and I was hurt. And so hearing that didn't make me feel good. I was like, no, that's no. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. And so now I don't think I'm the only one who says this, but now I say sticks and stones may break your bones, but words may break your heart. Because mm. and, and they may break your spirit based mm. on what we're talking mm. about here. Like words are powerful. Mm. Yeah, that's, that, that, that's why and that's why you became er uh, too, because I know I know that tongue of yours. <laughs> it's like, oh, no. it's I like am a, very meek. It's like a it's like a samurai. Pause. I ain't mean it that way. Don't take it out of context. Oh snap. <laughs> oh. Be fun. No, <laughs> no, no, no gas station. No gas. I ain't say nothing. I was, I was gonna reach gas for my station. water. I was gonna reach. <laughs> but and also both may be true. John just can't speak to that. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I can't. I can't. I can't. Not <laughs> gas station. <laughs> now that was gas station. <laughs> Didn't even make it through the first app of season four. <laughs> no, no comment. No comment. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yes. And on that note, what well, Tamika was going to finish her point. Right? Oh, was bad, she, bad. That was it. Oh, that was it? The money, the money. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. 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 Yes, okay. yes, yes. Yeah, John was saying that I was raw, and I'm like, I'm not raw. I'm very chill, very calm. What was that? Fight or flight. I think in essence, that's what he was calling. That's fight or flight syndrome, right? Yeah, he was fight saying fight, I'm yeah. a fighter, and I'm not. I'm like super chill. I'm going to walk away. I'll be like, okay, no problem. You got it. You win. Like that. Right, right. 
<laughs> Until the boogeyman gets you, huh? Right, right. You're Sad. saving that strength for the for yes. the boogeyman. Yes, the boogeyman. I for the never boogie man. this with you. I should have never told you about my boogie nah, man. Nah, nah, <laughs> nah. Nah, I dig it. Listen, to, Bull, to this Bull walks man, away, right? To this right. day, I don't, I don't like to see violence. I don't even like, I don't even like to see if someone outside and they fighting. Yeah. I wouldn't even go towards the fight. Some people like to see fight. What do people do now when it's a fight now? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. said everyone's doing now. What are you gonna tape it? Yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't I just don't like to see violence. There's I don't like to see, I don't like to look at it. You understand? I mean, we done seen all kind of horrific things coming up, you know, people shot, stabbed, people commit suicide and all that stuff. Yeah. But some people go, Oh shit, go look, nah. Why do I want to see that? Yeah, I wanna see that. Yeah. You can't just erase that. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, some people gravitate towards seeing those type of things. And everybody's pulling out their phone no matter what. First thing, they're pulling out the phone. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, what what did I say that made you think about this? I don't know what this world is coming to. I I truly don't. But The the world is literally a stage now. Everybody breaking out the phone. (laughs) Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. That's not even a saying. It's it's literal now. It's, it's literal. It's it, indeed it is. Sure, for sure, for sure. A Congrats. great topic, Jar. Truly, great topic, man. Thank you. Thank Definitely you. Definitely thought provoking. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we 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 start we starting off on fire with season four. Episode episode one, season four. We starting off on fire. Cuatro. First episode <laughs> of season cuatro. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, 92.6 the spot. You heard? Yeah, man. Thank you for tuning in. Still commercial free. <laughs> Still commercial free. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Josh, save us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We out of here. We out of here. Listen, listen. 92.6 the spot. Not right, not wrong. On behalf of Empress and the dark one. Cool King. This is just Ja. Peace. Adios. Till next time. Hasta luego. <laughs> <laughs>